when people first meet, they literally can keep their hands off each other as if they're trying to absorb each other through osmosis. A few years down the road, they avoid even being in the same room for more than absolutely necessary. At the same time, couples complain about feeling lonely in the relationship, not getting enough sex, if any, not feeling prioritized or wanted etc. Often people find affairs and perhaps for a short time they get to feel what they've lost in their own relationship. But clearly there's a huge cost to this approach. Others resolve to the status of roommates sharing chores and think that's just how life is and try to fill up the emptiness inside in other ways. Couples fight for attention and bedroom time. They argue about whose fault it is. So what gives, why, and how do people get there? Why does it matter? Why does touch matter? And how to fix the situation and reestablish a strong physical and emotional bond again? First, why and how do people get so disconnected and unaffectionate? Relationships are living systems and like anything alive, they need nurturing to thrive. Over time, couples fall into patterns replacing meaningful communication with logistical conversations like what time is dinner or did you pay the bills? When kids show up, they further fragment people's attention and become the center of almost every conversation. While logistical concerns do matter, they don't feed the emotional connection. That leads to more touch and affection. Sometimes we also hold on to small frustrations or resentments, and when they go unaddressed, they snowball. This makes it harder to feel warmth or affection towards the other person, even if we care deeply. I addressed unresolved conflicts and resentments in this video. If you want to take a look, I'll put the link in the description below so you can check it out next. It's also natural for routines to set in, especially in long-term relationships. While predictability creates a feeling of safety and security, which humans value a lot, it also makes a relationship feel stale if we don't intentionally create moments of connection and novelty. People grow and change throughout their lives. That's healthy, being a human, but when two people are in a relationship, their paths don't always evolve in the same direction or at the same pace. Maybe your interests or goals have shifted or you've discovered new priorities that are taking up more of your emotional energy and require a time commitment. That's normal, but it sometimes makes us feel disconnected from those we once felt very close to. Sometimes dynamics change because of health problems where one partner requires more physical care. When that happens, the other partner may feel and become the actual caretaker instead of the wife or the husband. They may resent the role because they feel the loss of the way things used to be, even if they're not consciously aware of it, and even if they really love their partner. It's not easy to shift roles from being a caretaker to a sexy beast. Mostly, it's impossible. Similar dynamics occur when a baby is born and the wife becomes the mom. The focus shifts to raising the child and the other partner frequently finds himself or herself competing for attention and affection with their child. Sometimes the other partner no longer finds the mom as attractive as the wife used to be. Another interesting role change, killing intimacy and physical connection, occurs when a wife suddenly rises up her career and makes more money than her partner or her partner loses employment for an extended period of time. Statistically, in these situations, women usually divorce or leave the man in short order. Even if the couple does not separate, the other partner might feel inadequate and demoralized, even resentful, and it's not uncommon to see 
the men develop some bad habits like a porn addiction or substance abuse. There have been studies showing that when a man loses his status as the provider, he more frequently becomes physically and emotionally abusive as if attempting to re-establish his authority. Well, this shift definitely does not help build strong emotional bond or nurture any kind of intimacy or affection. Then there's the situation where one partner simply lets themselves go, gaining too much weight, observing poor hygiene, or refusing to engage in healthy physical activities that the couple used to enjoy together, maybe dancing, hiking, or going to the gym, playing tennis, etc. The other partner feels let down, disappointed, and uncertain about what to do and say. They usually no longer feel attracted to their partner and no longer interested in any kind of intimacy. This is a particularly interesting dynamic that raises questions about what is expected of the other partner, what the right thing to do is, and how to do it. It deserves its own video. If you subscribe to this channel, you can watch it when it comes out. As we change, our emotional needs change too. Expressing those needs may feel risky, especially if we're worried about judgment or rejection or scaring the other partner off and jeopardizing the stability in the relationship. Ironically, we end up doing it anyway by holding back and hiding our true thoughts and feelings. But holding back also leads to a kind of an emotional isolation, even in relationships that are otherwise pretty strong. Sometimes it's not about emotions or the relationship itself. It's about life circumstances that make connection harder. For instance, physical distance can be a significant barrier when we are not able to spend time with someone regularly. It naturally reduces the opportunity for affection and bonding. And in close proximity, life transitions like becoming a parent or taking on a new job can shift your priorities and leave little room for the other person. Other times, dynamics with extended family could cause conflict within the relationship or take one partner away from the other, representing complications and additional strain on the relationship. And let's not underestimate the toll of daily routines. Life gets busy and it's easy to let relationships fall into the background when work, family obligations, and even self-care take up so much time and energy. So these factors don't mean there's something wrong with the relationship. They just highlight the importance of being intentional about maintaining the emotional and physical connection with your partner. Okay, so... These are some of the reasons why people stop touching each other, literally, but why does it matter anyway? Touch isn't just a physical act. It's actually one of the most powerful ways we communicate love and care and safety to one another. It has a direct impact on how close and secure we feel in the relationship. On a biological level, physical touch triggers the release of oxytocin, which is sometimes known as the bonding hormone. Oxytocin helps foster trust and a sense of connection between people. It's the same hormone that plays a big role in a parent-child bonding, so it's deeply rooted in how we form and maintain relationships. At the same time, Touch reduces cortisol, the hormone that makes us feel stressed. So when you hold hands, hug, or even just sit close to your partner, it has a calming effect that benefits both of you. Touch also helps to communicate things that words sometimes can't. For example, a hug after a difficult day can say, I'm here for you even if no words are spoken, or holding hands during an argument signals to the other person, I'm still on your side, even though we disagree. It's these small but powerful gestures that build trust and emotional safety over time. 
Another thing to keep in mind is that touch is a way to reinforce intimacy in a healthy relationship. Both emotional and physical intimacy are important. They feed into each other. When we feel emotionally close, we often seek physical connection. We want to touch the other person. And when we touch, it deepens that emotional bond. Over time, touch becomes a symbol of the relationship itself, a reminder that you are there for each other in a unique and special way. When touch is missing, it's common for partners to start feeling disconnected, even if they're spending time together or having conversations. That lack of physical connection sometimes leads to feelings of loneliness or being unappreciated. If you've noticed that's happening, it might be worth reflecting on what's been going on recently, like some of the things I discussed just a moment ago. Ultimately, touch is a way we show love, create comfort, and build security. It's not just about physical closeness, it's about emo emotional bonding. If you feel that touch has become less frequent in your relationships, It's okay to talk about it with your partner. It's not a sign of failure. It's an opportunity to grow closer. And sometimes even starting with small, thoughtful gestures can pave the way for deeper intimacy and more affection. Sometimes my clients say that if they talk about it to their partner, it gets worse. In other words, When they say something to their partner, the person becomes defensive and the whole thing starts feeling forced and unnatural. Okay, I can see that for sure. So, I have two suggestions for you. But first, hit the thumbs up if you liked the video so far. Subscribe and click the notification bell so you get notified when the next video comes out. Okay, first suggestion. It doesn't take grand gestures to rebuild physical connection. Something as simple as a quick hug before you leave for the day or even easier, sitting close to each other while watching TV like right next to each other can make a big difference. These are things you can do without talking to your partner about it. You be the one stopping and giving a hug. You be the one sneaking in closer on the couch. You be the one offering your hand, etc. You introduce more touch without having a major discussion. Just do it, be patient and see what happens. Chances are your partner will start reciprocating. Second suggestion. When they do reciprocate, give them lots of positive feedback in the form of more affection and in letting them know how great it feels to you, how much you appreciate them. It will bring you more, I promise. I'm not suggesting you love bomb them or become clingy. I'm suggesting you make an effort to lead by example with small gestures and patience. See where it takes you. I guarantee you that if you give your partner affection and care, your relationship will grow stronger. Then you can have some of the harder conversations about routine, finances, kids, outside factors, etc. You want to have these from a place of safety and security and from a place of emotional connection. It makes all the difference. Your relationship will feel more like lovers solving problems together and not so much like a job. So at the end of the day, it's really about being intentional and recognizing that even the smallest acts of physical affection can strengthen the bond between you. You don't need time for your relationship. You just need to make a better use of the time you already have. It takes a minute to hug someone or give them a kiss. If you have hours to watch TV, you have minutes to get close to your partner. Do the easy things first. Before you know it, you'll be flirting again. And before you know it, you will resurrect your sex life and have some more fun. What I want to emphasize is that disconnection and a lack of affection are not signs that a relationship is doomed. They're signs that something needs attention. 
by understanding what's at the root of these feelings, whether it's relational patterns, personal growth, or external stressors, you can start to take steps to rebuild closeness and warmth. Relationships, like anything worthwhile, require effort, but that effort can lead to a much better and more fulfilling relationship. Part of the solution is being willing to share what's happening internally. When we let someone in on how we're growing or what's shifting for us, it opens the door for them to support us or adopt with us. And if you're feeling emotionally distant, it's also worth reflecting on whether you are giving yourself enough space to reconnect with your partner rather than just focusing on your own journey. If this resonates with you, think about ways to carve out moments for connection. Even setting aside 15 minutes a day to check in with your partner free from distractions can make a huge difference. When life is overwhelming, those small, consistent actions help remind both of you that the relationship matters. Let me know if you like this video. Give me the thumbs up. Subscribe and click the notification bell so you know when the next one comes out. See you soon.